What's up, guys? So, with Hertz win over Spargo at Battle of BC, Snake has been on the rise and has finally won another major in Ultimate. Snake is a good character to talk about. He's an interesting character to talk about. Had a really strong peak early Ultimate. Uh, fell off. People were like, yeah, this character has exploitable weaknesses, yada, yada. And now we're seeing people saying characters top 10, if not top 5. People recognizing this character is very, very strong. So, what happened? How do we go from a character that was like top 5 to maybe not even top 20 back to top 5? I want to talk about something interesting, and that is in Brawl, he was a very good character as well. He was top 2 in the game, was new. I think as worst, he was like top 6. And honestly, I feel like we never hit the stage in competitive brawl of like, well, snake resurgence, right? Like, what if we counterplay his perceived weaknesses? Brawl was like, I, I feel like brawl lasted competitively around like four or five years super seriously. And then people really start playing PM. So we never got to see that same length of time to potentially see a snake resurgence. You ever want a chance to fight against one of the best Smash players in the world? Just to see what it's like while chilling with them, having a great time. Well, guess what? If you check out the Metify link in the description below, you can get exactly that with people like me, Leo, Light Tweak. You can literally fight against any of the best people in the world. Just like, click away. But yeah, uh, so Ultimate Sneak, right? He has the same weaknesses as Brawl Sneak, honestly. Characters slow, very laggy aerials, very poor disadvantage state with his recovery being both really good and really exploitable depending on your character and the positioning. Grenades are both a strength but can be used against you. Uh, has trouble killing. Like, you know he has a lot of kill power. Actually hitting the kill move can be very difficult if the opponent knows what they're doing because he lacks disjoints. His range on his attacks, it's decent, but it's not like amazing, especially for ultimate standards. And generally, you kind of know what he's doing because, oh, he puts up a grenade. Like, wow. You know, I wonder if that grenade's covering, right? Like, C4 is here. So, he gives himself away a lot. His ledge trapping also is kind of subpar. It's weird. It, in theory, seems good. In practice, it's not as good as it looks. His strengths. Let's talk about his strengths and what the players have really done to push them. Because I think that's the interesting thing about this character. Biggest thing is that I think a lot of people view Snake as a zoner. Especially when Ultimate is new. People are like, oh my god. You know, the Snake's just throwing grenades. Wow. Ooh, explosions, explosions, explosions. People don't like watching Snake. And I don't know how. I thought this character was sick to watch. But anyway. Um, but when you think about it, he doesn't really outzone most characters. Like, if your character is, like, a melee-based character, like a Falcon or Mario, yeah, sure, he's going to zone you out. But, like, any projectile zones them out. <laughs> so, when you fight, like, an actual zoner, like a Min Min, a Samus, a Rob, he does not win by throwing grenades at them. He just, he, the grenades are too slow, they take time to explode... Like, they just lose to the tempo of other projectile characters. And Snake's like good at following up on grenades from these ranges. Like, you do like this and hit a grenade, which only does, like, 11 damage. You, you can't really chase them from that grenade explosion that well. Like, you have to be up close. Compare that to, like, Min Min, where arm hits you and, wow, you're dying. Or Samus Char Char hits you, she can follow up. I can think of more examples of zoners. But the idea is a real zoner can convert their hits into damage from much farther away in Ultimate than Snake can. What Snake's really good at is his CQC. When Snake's in your face, he is a monster, right? Almost 20 damage. 26 damage. 20 damage. Like, hits super hard. Quick attacks, right? Like, forward tilt, pretty quick button, 16 damage. Um, I think he can do up throw, up tilt. It's like, hits like a monster. Of course, he's heavy. So he trades like a truck, especially with all these single hit moves. He's not worried about like trading with one of his multi hit moves and doing no damage for the most part. And the thing that Snake players have done to really push this character is figure out how to get up close and force these situations. Like if you watch Spargo hurt, something you'll notice is that Spargo's normal game plan of like space out aerials, like back air, control a lot of space with that just didn't work versus hurt. Because what hurt would do is he pulls that grenade, right? Okay, that grenade is covering the space. Now Spargo doesn't want to land there or he's there he's going to shield. Also, re important to mention, Snake's grenades are bigger for the opponent than him unless the opponent grabs the grenade and makes it theirs. It's like right there. Yep. It's a really massive difference. There was a grenade. Oh, like, oh you, you, you don't want to be in that spot now. You're going to shield, he might grab you. If it hits you, he's going to follow up. C4 here. You don't want to be in this platform area. So he forces you either to place off in the corner here 
to risk running underneath the C forge is not a good idea. That's a problem, right? And then what if, and this is the big thing Hurt did. Hurt did a lot of, he would run up and like, he would throw the grenade forward. A lot of snake players would do this where they pull the grenade, they kind of like do this, which is fine. But the grenade's behind snake. Um, it's kind of easy to just avoid hitting the grenade when you do that. I mean, you can also do this where you, you see him do this a lot too, where he kind of pulls the grenade out, back faces Fargo, now it's in front of him. Much harder to hit Snake. Uh, pressure shield with the grenade there. I saw him do a lot of like this. But if you don't keep the grenade in your hand and instead you move forward after tossing it, suddenly you have much more freedom of things to do. And of course you can do this where you can be like, I'm gonna pick up the grenade. I'm just gonna like toss it, pick it up, shield. And I think that's one of the biggest advancements the Snake players have made is there's this constant like no you're not i'm not just controlling this space i'm taking this i'm making you take bad fights and if you take the fight cool i'm gonna win because you're hitting my grenades even if it hits snake of course he has frame one combo break with grenade which is insane you have to play around that so much we also play around air dodge jumping at disadvantage <clears throat> be reverse grenades be reverse c4s if i didn't drop that there like you have to play around so much when you do hit the character assuming you know he doesn't just have a grenade in the uh field going hey if you hit me the grenade's still gonna pop behind you and stop the follow-ups and this is one of the things you really notice i think if you watch uh heart play on fd so snake players used to hate fd like detested right because the idea was you want platforms for snake you want to drop a c4 on the platform and say i control this platform so with a grenade you can't go on this platform you can't go on this platform all the platforms are covered. And also for landing, right? Because when Snake is hit, he really wants to, like... He doesn't want to go to ledge. His ledge game is bad. You will see Snake players consistently would rather do something like this. Like, if they go to ledge, they'll jump, and then they might just be like... Take the hit even. And now you have to deal with that. So the platforms are really strong at letting him land. But what if instead you just get hit really high and you just throw a grenade onto the stage and something like FD? Just and pretend this is FD. So that's a grenade and you like kind of like, oh, oops, nice up. And now suddenly the grenade is going to explode. You're going to land near the explosion and that's awkward for the opponent to deal with. And I think that's one of the biggest things that Hurt does on FD, which makes him very good there, is he recognizes you don't need platforms to control space. You throw the grenades on places you want to land, and you can land just as effectively. And without platforms, you get to play around one of Snake's biggest weaknesses. You can air camp the shit out of Snake. I think most characters that beat Snake beat him because they just kind of go, Okay, Snake, you want to, like, fight me up close, but you're slow, your aerial's kind of laggy, and just not great overall. What if I just go to a platform and don't fight you? Go to platform, throw a projectile, run away. Go, uh, throw a projector, run away, pick up grenade, toss out of you, pressure with your grenade, run away more, right? I think, for example, and there, there are strengths of platform stages, but I think it's a consistent weakness of his. That is something that, like, the snake players have gotten better at dealing with with the space control as well. But, yeah, and then, of course, the conversion. Something snake players have gotten really good at is just their conversion. Because you always have, like, day one, like, oh, you do this. Cool. But I've now seen the snake players start to do things like this more often where they they go for that stuff like right, nikita follows especially nikita was broken day one and zinc players figured out things like if someone hits nikita you can like cancel it as it gets hit and they'll still pop him with the explosion which is really hard to showcase here but the idea is like i let go of this as soon as it gets hit and now they're getting punished for it anyway force them into poor recoveries and then you can just go off stage and back air them that lingering back air one of the most effective edge guards in the game like clouds off stage, you do this, you might just die. Covers direction with layer dodge very well. Um, beats a lot of attacks. Knockback angle is pretty horizontal. And I just feel like that's one of those things where it's like the snake players got really good at using this. And it meant that there you can't just counterplay Nikita and recover versus him. His edge guarding is genuinely very, very good. 
Uh, something I've seen Hurt do as well with the character, which has gotten... Which I, I don't think his lead trapping is great, so I've said this before. But he does put the C4 there, and it's scary, right? Well... Here, this should be better. His lead sword, yep. Yep, so you put this, he has no leg. And now suddenly they have to respect that situation. So you really... Your goal with this character, the snake players have realized, is prevent someone from jumping. You still can't juggle well. Even with, like, dash tech to chase on landings. Like, he, he can't chase the juggles well. So if you force people to recover low and go to ledge by controlling this airspace like this. Like this. Maybe with some of this. This. You set up this. Which is really scary. Especially because this character... This character is interesting. He can kill you at 100. Easily. But he needs to get that opening. If you know what you're doing, that can be difficult. But if you're really... And this is something that the snake players are not very good at. Parries, right? Parry, up tilt. Phenomenal. Or this. I've seen so many snake players now. They low profile so much stuff. They just go, all right, you're going to do an aerial. Crawl. Punish. Or maybe some grabs even. I think you can crawl versus uh, random. There's just a lot of things you can crawl underneath. Right? And just threatening people. Someone's on a platform. Just got to wait here. You have to do anything like, what, are they going to fall through aerial? That's too scary. Are they going to jump? What if you get the jump time? Because even if this whiffs because they jumped, that's fine. You can try to chase their platform landings. Or maybe it's on like a stage like Smashville where there's one platform, which, by the way, Smashville is amazing for him. How important their recovery steps like, are. Where it's like snake players would be forward, just, you know, recover low like this sometimes. And this is where they die versus good players. Like right here, you actually just don't exist. But since most ultimate characters can't chase this deep instead of blast zone and live, you can use that to your advantage. As this character. And of course, directional air dodge is insane in this game. And uh, even if you know how to punish it, if someone uses it right, that's that's a hard one to punish. I think that's kind of the point, right? Is like all of his weaknesses have counterplay. They have things you can do to make up for it. And Sank players have figured that out. And that is why we're seeing such a resurgence of the character with her, with Apollo Kage. Kronos is another player that has done well in the past couple of years. Shogun was doing well in Japan, but I think he just recently retired. I think Dio does well. Like, one of the most successful characters for a reason. And that's just my take on why that is. So I hope you thought this video was interesting and a little bit enlightening on this character. Peace!